I'm asking anybody in the Arab world, anybody has seen Lat and Uzza, you will never come across any person say, I have seen Lat and Uzza. Nobody has seen it. So Allah is asking a question, Afaraitum Lata wal Uzza. Have you seen Lat and Uzza? Wa manata thalit al ukhra and and another another the third goddess. Alakumu Zakaru wala Uluntha, what for you the male sex and for him the female? Tilka Ida Idan Kismatun Diza. Behold, such would be indeed a division most unfair. Now the ayah further says about these gods, about these idols. Allah says in the further, In hiya illa asma un sammaitumuha. These are nothing but names you have invented. These are names but you have invented. Samaitumuha antum wa abaukum. Sultan. These are nothing but names which you have invented. There were house of, in the house of God, there were idols. So Allah said, have you seen them? These are just names which you have invented, you and your fathers, which Allah has sent down, no authority. I am reading the Quranic ayat. These are nothing but names which you have, you have invented, you and your fathers, which Allah has sent down, no authority. They follow nothing but conjecture and what their own souls desire, even though there has already come to them guidance from the Lord. So by this ayah, Surah Najam 53, 23, is that whatever people say about Lat, Manat, and Uzzah, and idol worship in the house of Allah, are just nothing but names which people have invented today and in the ancient times and all times. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I am Muhammad Isaac. I'm knowing that uh, our, the first house, of God was Kaaba. What is the status of Jerusalem and Beit al -Mukaddas? This is a very important question. What is the status of Jerusalem and the Beit al -Mukaddas? The house, the, 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 in Arabic, the Muqaddas means holy. I don't know the word Maqdas. Muqaddas means holy. Thank you. So, the, for English people, people, for English people, Baitul Muqaddas means house, a holy house. The translation would be holy house. And Jerusalem is a city in Israel. Jerusalem. So he's asking what is the status of Jerusalem or Baitul Muqaddas? Now, first of all, I would like to tell you that in the Quran, there is no mentioning of the, this status being expected of Jerusalem. It's not mentioned in the Quran. But it is mentioned in the Bible. If you read the Bible, the word Jerusalem you'll find there. And the house of God is mentioned in the Bible. The house of God is also mentioned in the Bible. And it refers to Jerusalem. The Bible refers to Jerusalem and the house of God is mentioned in Jerusalem. That's not mentioned in the Quran. So in Arabic, I am just trying to relate something. You just have to analyze, you have to listen what I'm saying. In, in the Quran, there is a word Dar es Salaam, Dar es Salaam, which can be, which means the house or the wall of Islam, peace. The wall of peace, the house of peace. If I translate the word in Arabic in Quran, Dar es Salaam, means the house of peace or the wall of peace. If I ask anybody here, where is that house of peace in the world? I read the, so many ayahs, nobody knows. Kaaba, that is the Dar es Salaam. The house of peace is nothing to, which is a twisted, I told you they are debating. It made it a Jerusalem. It's a Hebrew word, but Dar es Salaam, Muslim knows that is the house. Dar es Salaam, house of peace is the Kaaba, the first house. So how the division of the Kaaba is that they made Jerusalem a city in Israel and named as Jerusalem. 
and Baitul Muqaddas, they named it as a holy house. I was reading to the, the first page, I read Ard al Muqaddas. I said, This Makkah is the holy land. This Makkah is the holy land. And in that Makkah is the house. Won't this house be a Baitul Muqaddas? Is it not? Baitul Muqaddas is again the house, is again in the same Makkah. So Baitul Muqaddas is the same house, the Kaaba. The Baitul Muqaddas means the holy house. And Jerusalem means Dar es Salaam. And this is again Mecca. Now let us, let me read. I will read certain portions of the Bible. I will read certain portions of the Bible. I don't believe the Bible as the word of God, but I will read and you people can analyze that that in whatever I'm reading in the Bible contents will refer to which house? Will refer to which house? We are talking about the house of Allah, house of God, and that is Baitul Muqaddas or the house which is holy. And we are talking about Dar es Salaam or the house of Islam, peace. I'm reading the Bible words. These are not the words of God. They are, I'm just reading those words so that you people can understand. For the Christian, it is the word of God. So I'm asking the Christian. This basically, why I'm reading, I'm asking a Christian. That is Isaiah, a chapter in the Bible from the Old Testament. 66 chapter and 20 words. And they say, and they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses, in chariots, in the litters, and upon mules, and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem. Said the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in the clean vessel into the house of Lord. This is the city in Jerusalem today. I am asking this quotation, does it fit there? Who is going with the donkeys and the mules to there with an offering? Anybody goes there? With this offering which is mentioned in the Bible. From all nations of the world, from all nations of the world, who, who are those people who are going with horses, with, with foot, on travel to that house of God? Where? Where people go? Kaaba. So I'm, I'm giving the Christian world to look at that biblical verse and detect the house of Allah. It's not in Jerusalem. That is what this, this lying vacant. It's just a monument. Nobody goes there like this, as the Bible says. And the further if I read, even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. I'm reading again. And even, the, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them a joyful in my house of prayer. They burnt an offering and their sacrifices shall be accepted. The offerings you provide will be accepted and shall be accepted upon mine altar. For mine house shall be call, called a house of prayer. My house will be called a house of prayer. Who goes and pray there? In Jerusalem, in this city I'm talking about, in the world. Who goes and go pray there? Nobody. Where does people pray? In the house of Allah. Kaaba. Thank you. For my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. So now these quotations I have read from the Bible to show you what you read, you verify. So I am asking my Christian brothers and the Jews to read what the Bible says and verify. Where is that house you people are looking for? Where is that house you are looking for? Where nobody goes and prays there. Further in chapter Daniel 6, verse 10. Now when Daniel knew, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his, as his windows, and his windows being opened to his chamber towards the Jerusalem, towards the Darus Salaam. And we have analyzed what is Darus Salaam. He was facing the Darus Salaam, the house of peace. The house of Lord, Allah, being opened in his chamber towards the Darul Salaam, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a four time. Who does it? Who offers Salat to the house of Allah? No Jew does it. No Christian does it. So which this house is Darul Salaam is what? The Jerusalem is guys asking, this man is asking the Jerusalem. I am just giving the translation of this Darul Salaam. And this one more verse. Then thine eyes, then thine eyes may be open toward this house. When we look at the Kaaba, who has been there, 
How do we feel? So this Bible says, then the eyes may be opened toward this house night and day. Who is looking at this house night and day? Nobody in Jerusalem. This is right city. You are looking night and day to the house of Allah. So then these eyes may be opened toward this house night and day, even to the place of which thou hast said, my name shall be there, that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thou shalt make towards this place. Who placed, uh, prays towards the Kaaba? The Muslim world. And hearken thou to the supplement of thy servant and of thy people, Israel, when they shall pray towards this place, when they shall pray towards this place, and hear thou in heaven my dwelling place, and when thou hears and forgive. My ladies and gentlemen, I have read these verses for the Christian world, for the Jews, to find out where is the house of Allah, just not the monument and keep it on the, on the map. The house of Allah exists with people, the Muslim world, they are practicing the Salah, they are doing pilgrimage and Hajj and everything is being practiced. So just think and analyze your biblical terminologies. Yes, please. Shokat Ali Dost. My question is, why Muslims were saying their prayers facing Baitul Muqaddas before change of Qibla? I explain in very detail that when, you say, when we say that people offering prayers to, to the house that is Baitul Muqaddas, right? So now my, I explain that in the Bible, I read a biblical verse which says that Daniel was facing to Jerusalem. In the biblical terminology, facing to Jerusalem. And we understand Jerusalem is Darul Salaam, that is the house of Islam. Darul Salaam, the house of Islam, that means he was facing Kaaba. When did anybody face Darul Salaam? He was facing the house of Islam, that is Allah's house. Where, where, which Darul Salaam we are talking about? Directionally, both are different. Yes, I understand. Excuse me. And Makkah. I, I, I understand in the opposite direction. But I, in my understanding of the, when I explain what is Baitul Muqaddas, the house which is holy, and when I explain the, the, the Jerusalem as Darul Salaam, and I read biblical terminologies, which when we read and understand, it was referring to house of Allah, which is in Mecca, and the house of the city, the sacred city. Your topic was about Qibla. Yes. Excuse me, sir, if, if, I can, if I can maybe expound on your question a little bit, because on the table here I've got two questions, one from Mr. Javed and one from Mr. Abdul Qadir Ansari, and both the questions are similar, they might be to what you are asking, and that is, uh, one says, what do you say about Masjid al-Qiblatain? And the other question which is similar is, why were Muslims at the early time praying facing Jerusalem, later in a mosque known as Masjid al-Qiblatain? So this might be a little more precise as to what you were getting at. The gentleman was asking the similar sort of question. So now everybody who are not aware and but who are aware, like I've been to Mecca and Medina, and there is a mosque in the outskirts of Medina, which is referred as a mosque with two Qiblatain, or two fronts, meaning one front, and meaning the other front. Like you people are facing me, this is a front to you, this thing. This is a front means this is your Qibla, front. And I, my Qibla is this. So in, in, in Medina, outskirts of Medina, the mosque which are referred is exactly in opposite direction. Like Medina is in center. Can you put that chart on it? This is the Mecca. And if you see, don't, don't move your pencil, right on the, can you hear my voice? Right on the top is the north. Can you see the north? And down on the south is Mecca, is the, below the Mecca is the south. That is the geographical position. And on your right is the east, and here is the west. So Mecca is where the, where the point it is. So if you see on the top is al Madina. Can you point al Madina now? This is al Madina. Meaning from Mecca, if you travel north, are you falling? If you travel from Mecca to north, that is Al Madina, right like this. And if you fall, if you further travel a little bit of an angle to Jerusalem, that is the Jerusalem, that is further north, northwest, inaccurate, in merchant navy terminology. So now Mecca. Our Prophet Muhammad 
according to history, according to history, migrated from Mecca to Medina. From Mecca, point downwards, from Mecca to Medina. Again do it, from Mecca to Medina. So he traveled north. Everybody understand that? He was traveling north. So now, when the Salah, he was traveling, he didn't, he didn't go in, he, when he started going to, to Medina, so when the Salah time came, he was facing south. That means he was facing south. Prophet ﷺ was offering Salah. So the moment he is going to Medina, north, but he is facing south because the Makkah is in the south of Medina. Medina, from Medina, Makkah is the south. So he is facing south. So I am asking from the hall, which mosque our Prophet Muhammad ﷺ built in history, the first mosque. Loudly, please. Masjid e Quba. Masjid e Quba. And that the direction of Masjid e Quba is where? Southwards. Mecca. So, my question to the gentleman is to tell me and explain me how come the another mosque is in the outskirts of Medina, which was after the first mosque and having a face to Jerusalem? How can be a mosque when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam built the first mosque which is facing the south or to Mecca? The, the mosque with two Qiblas should be after the first mosque? Or if it is facing south, it, is, it, is, it cannot be the first mosque. So you work it out and please, I am not a, a man of history. I want to know from you. All the mosques of the world are facing Masjid Haram. There is, then if somebody like, some, 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 like church, like Hindu temple, they, one minute, any religious gathering, like we are sitting in a religious gathering, but we are not facing to Makkah. Every mosque which, where people do Qayyam, Ruku and Sujood is a part and parcel of the intersection of the sacred mosque. If they will, are not facing to the mosque, that's not the mosque. Even mosque in Jerusalem, Al-Aqsa, Al-Aqsa mosque in Jerusalem, what they say, is also facing Mecca. There are the two mosques. One is Masjid Haram and the other is Masjid Aqsa. Allah Barakna Havlahu. What do you explain? Thank you. I will explain. Mosque? Thank you. This reference our learned man is quoting from Surah Bani Israel, 17 Surah, Ayah 1. You can write down the reference. Surah Bani Israel, 17, Ayah 1. And he said Baitul Muqaddas, the word Baitul Muqaddas means house, holy house, in, in English. But now the ayah says, I will read the ayah and I will give you the meaning. Subhanalladhi yasra bi abdihi laylam min al masjid harami ila al masjid aqsa alladhi barakna hawlahu li nuri yaw min ayatina innahu huwa al-sami al-basir Glory to Allah who did, take, who did take his servant from the sacred mosque to a further mosque Masjid al-Aqsa means to the further mosque further from Masjid haram from the sacred mosque our Prophet is taken from the sacred mosque to a farthest mosque or further mosque or the corner of the mosque. Alladhi barakna hawlahu whose surroundings, surroundings of Masjid al-Aqsa is blessed. Whose surrounding of Masjid al-Aqsa is blessed. Linuriya min ayatina in order so that we may show him some of our ayats. Innahu who was Samiul basir for surely is Allah is the one who hears and sees. Now, the reference that is made, is made like Masjid Al-Aqsa, the further mosque whose, whose surrounding is blessed, is in his understanding is Baitul Muqaddas, the house or holy house. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I will explain this ayat 
this very ayat and I will demonstrate very easily so that we will identify the Masjid Laksa today in this hall. But before I do the demo part, I would not like if somebody gets the answer, he should raise the hand. But do not please speak because I want to show that this ayat is simply understood by the majority of this house very easily. Just raise the hands when you have understood when I will pose a question during the explanation of this ayah. This ayah is referred in history as the ascension of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him from the sacred mosque from Mecca to the Darul Salaam or the Jerusalem or Baitul Muqaddas in situated in, in Israel. And from there, there is a mosque referred as Al-Aqsa or Baitul Muqaddas, according to the gentleman, and he ascended into the heavens in the skies. That is the narration which you have been taught from your childhood. But today, everybody listen very carefully to what the ayah translation I will make by the, this book. And just look at the demo I'm going to give. Subhana Ladi Asra bi Abdihi Lailam min al Masjid Harami. Glory to Allah. Glory to Him who did take His servant from the sacred mosque. This point, just mental picture I'm giving you all of you. This point is the sacred mosque. Suppose you just have your mental picture that this is the sacred mosque, Masjid al Haram, this point. So Allah says, Glory to Allah who did take His servant by night from the sacred mosque to a father mosque, this point, to a father mosque. Prophet ﷺ is taken from this point, that is Masjid al-Haram, from the sacred mosque in Mecca to a father mosque that is supposed to be in Jerusalem, present day Jerusalem, this Jerusalem. So Allah says, I repeat, glory to him. Subhanallah asra bi abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-harami il al-masjid al-aqsa. Glory to him who did take his servant from the sacred mosque to a father mosque. So he came here. That is in Jerusalem. Now, you've all of you have got the mental picture? Okay? Can you just raise the hands for a minute? Okay, majority understand what you are, what I'm saying. Now I repeat. I'm repeating, not repeating, but I'm explaining the address the address of the Masjid Al-Aqsa because I've been reading the interpretations there are different opinions of the Masjid Al-Aqsa some people say it is in disguise interpreters of the scholars some say it is in Jerusalem some say I don't know where they are where it is probably the Jerusalem mosque so now we have to analyze our minds where is this mosque today in this room the definition or the address is in the same ayah. Alladhi barakna hawlahu. The address of this house or of this Masjid Al-Aqsa is blessed. Meaning the surroundings of Masjid Al-Aqsa is blessed. Where he was taken? From the Masjid Al-Aqsa that is in Mecca to what history says in Jerusalem. And this surroundings is blessed. Alladhi barakna hawlahu. We have blessed the area or the surroundings of Masjid Al-Aqsa or the further mosque. It is blessed. Don't just raise your hands. I am asking a question. The surroundings of present day Jerusalem mosque is blessed or not? No. But the ayat cannot be wrong. The ayat cannot be wrong. Don't answer please. I am telling you not to answer. Just raise your hands. So I'm asking you to think, everybody, where is that mosque after Masjid Haram? Which is this mosque after Masjid Haram whose surroundings are blessed today? Don't just raise the hands. Don't answer, please. I will repeat again because there are few people who have not understood. Glory to Allah who did take his servant from the sacred mosque to a further mosque whose surroundings are blessed so that we should show him our ayats. Just think in your minds again. 
There is a special mosque after the Masjid Ram. There is a mosque which is a father mosque from Masjid Ram, whose whose surroundings are blessed, so that the ayahs were shown, so that the ayahs were shown. Which is that mosque? Raise the hands. Read out the name. Read out the name. Thank you. So everybody understand. It is a very simple thing. So now I repeat. سبحان الذي يسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا. Glory to Allah who did take, who did take his servant by night from the sacred mosque to a further mosque whose surroundings surroundings of Masjid Al-Aqsa is blessed in order so that we may show him some of our ayats. The Quran says that the surroundings of that mosque is blessed. We know for sure. And Allah does not speak lies. Allah speaks the truth. The surrounding of that mosque should be blessed in all times. And we know who has been to Mecca and Medina, the blessing is the same. Like Allah says, Inna wala bayt this is the first house that is made in Mecca, Becca, Mubarak is the same word for this masjid, Barakna, Mubarak and Barak is same. The atmosphere, the environment which you see in Mecca is the almost same which you see in Medina. If this is not the Medina mosque, is not the Prophet's mosque. Aqsa mosque is not the Prophet's mosque. So my question to you is, why does the people in the whole world, the Muslim world, when he went to Mecca and why they go to Medina, where is that mosque? Prophet's mosque not mentioned the Quran. Excuse me, yes, I'm not speaking to you, I'm just asking you, a, I'm not speaking to you directly. The Quran speaks of a mosque, Al-Aqsa, Al-Aqsa mosque, which is blessed. So my question to the Muslim world in history is, why the Prophet mosque is missed out in the Quran? Why the Prophet mosque? is missed out in the Quran if this Masjid Al-Aqsa is not the Masjid Al-Aqsa's mosque. The whole Muslim world who go to Medina, or who go to Mecca, he visit Medina. He visit Medina and offer Salah there. Because our Prophet was sent there, because the Barakat was given. So that mosque is identified as the Prophet mosque because he was taken. And we are following his Sunnah by going from Mecca to Medina. And we see the blessing in all times and it will remain like such. Thank you. This will be the last question that we will take because it has been almost over an hour. Thank you very much for making it. Assalamu alaikum. <coughs> oh, Bani Israel starts with a journey in a single night from Khana Kaaba and as per your uh, explanation to Masjid al Navi. I think everybody put their hands and you also. Maybe. <laughs> A, a, a little bit of question only. So, uh, this journey from Hanakaba to Masjid Nabi, uh, Masjid Nabi was, as per our uh, historical knowledge, was constructed after he reached Medina Sharif, after the Hijrat. But according to this uh, ayat, it seems as if the mosque was already there and he was uh, taken from Hanakaba to Masjid Nabi. Will you please make it more clear? Yeah, that is true. According to the Quran, the, the question is that according to his understanding from history, Masjid al Navi was built, a structure was built after the migration. That's what his historical understanding is. But the Quran says that when he was taken from Masjid al Aram to Masjid al Aqsa, it says, Alladi barakna hawlaw. It does not say, a physical mosque like a building like with walls. It says that the blessing will be around that point where you will offer Salah, Masjid. So even if there was no structure, you are going by the structure. I am, Quran is speaking by the Masjid means in Arabic where you do your sujood, where you put your forehead. And so Masjid is a understanding of Arabic is where you put your sujood. So Allah says He'll take you to a place where you, the sujood will be there and He's blessed their surroundings. So the structure may be built afterwards, but the position was there. Like the house was there, Masjid Al-Aqsa was there. He was taken there. So if the, and today if you go, the Masjid is expanded tremendously from what we know the master from few years back. And it is increasing day by day. So that whole lot has been barakat, alladhi barakna hawlaw. It is again that same area. 
then that has been expanded in all time by the physical structure. We are talking about the sujood structure. It's sujood. That is we are talking about. Thank you very much, Mr. Muhammad Sheikh. And I would like to especially thank each and every one of you who took out the time to come and attend this function. Please, before you leave, if you have not already uh, put in your performer, which we, were, which we asked you to sign in, please do so, so that we can put you on our mailing list.